Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to talk about the CS Paint library and how it can be used to render graphics and text. CS Paint library, rendering with Vulkan. We are going to define what the term graphics refers to and how it relates to computer software. Graphics is a broad term which is not limited to 3D. It also includes text rendering and 2D drawing. To introduce CS Paint, we are going to demonstrate a sample program. This will provide context for some of the reasons we decided that a new graphics library should exist. So what sorts of things do fall under the heading of graphics? Graphics are anything which is responsible for displaying images or text, usually on the screen. The optimal goal is to display these items in a way which is effective and meaningful to the consumer. Graphics rendering is divided into two main categories, raster and vector. Raster graphics uses a bitmap image, which is most often processed on the CPU. Since a raster image is a fixed size bitmap, it cannot be scaled up or down without tremendous loss of quality. Plus, this can take a good deal of memory. Vector graphics are a bit different, as this approach uses drawing commands, which are specified by low-level function calls or available in a higher-level library. This approach uses a device-independent coordinate system, and the functions or commands are basically drawing lines or curves. Since the monitor is still a raster device, at some point, the vector graphics need to be converted into a rasterized image at the appropriate resolution. This involves a lot of mathematical calculations and is expensive to do on the CPU. This rasterization process is better to do on the GPU, which is specifically optimized for this task. Scaling a vector image and re-rendering will generate a new image at the requested size with almost perfect quality. If you're interested in the history of GPU development and how the industry has evolved over the last 20 years, please take a look at our three-part video series on graphics technology. These videos were released earlier this year. Around 15 years ago, the most common resolution for a monitor was VGA. This monitor has a resolution of 640 by 480, which is around 300,000 pixels to cover the entire screen. Currently, the vast majority of desktop computers have a resolution of 1920 by 1080, which is often called 1080p or Full HD. This is around 2 million pixels for full coverage. 4K monitors came out around 2014 and are becoming more common for desktop monitors and laptop computers. The 8K monitor is just starting to show up with the current price of a 32-inch 8K monitor listed at around $4,000. As these prices drop, consumers will want to use the better resolution displays and your applications need to adapt. If you have a program running full screen on an 8K monitor and the screen needs to be refreshed, there are 33 million pixels which must be redrawn. This is roughly 100 times more work than drawing the whole screen on a VGA monitor. The increase in the number of pixels for newer monitors means that where you render an image makes a big difference. A modern CPU typically consists of 4 to 8 cores, and a high-end one may have 10 or 20. For maximum performance, your application should generally start no more than 1 or 2 threads per core. A modern GPU has thousands of cores. The current NVIDIA RTX 2080 has 3,000 cores, and the list price is only around $800.
These GPU cores are hyper-threaded, which means that in order to achieve maximum performance, you must have tens or even hundreds of threads active per core. This is by design, and it is a hardware feature provided by vendors like NVIDIA and AMD to increase performance. The largest influence on graphics has always been driven by the gaming community. Their demands have encouraged vendors to produce newer and more powerful graphics hardware. So in turn, the tools programmers like us use must also change. Although this push comes from gamers, it is extremely useful for GUI developers since graphics are more than just explosions and super cool special effects. As a GUI developer, using modern GPU hardware has many benefits. One of the most important is support for high DPI monitors, which is not simple and should really only be tackled on the GPU. As monitors increase in resolution, rendering graphics on the CPU will no longer be viable, so the tools need to evolve. In the demo we are about to show, there are 3D models, 3D text, and the chalkboard, which is intended to represent what text will look like in a GUI application. This demo requires C++17 and CMake 3.8 to build. It uses SDL2, which is an open source library for handling tasks such as creating a main window, displaying it, and processing keyboard or mouse events. Users of OpenGL may be familiar with GLUT, which serves a similar purpose as SDL2. This is our graphics demo, which is rendering several images. The copper pot, the table, and the salt and pepper shaker are 3D models and positioned to show perspective. We add in an event loop in the demo to respond to the arrow keys so we can rotate the pot. The rectangle on the upper left is intended to represent a screen in a GUI application. It is worth noting the words on the chalkboard are rendered in the same way as the green text which is moving around. The reason why some of the text looks 2D is that the rectangle it is projected on is flat. The green text is moving and twisting because the surface it is projected on is animated. This makes it appear three-dimensional, even though all the text in this demo is rendered as 3D. The demo we just showed links with a library called CS Paint, which provides a higher level abstraction using the Vulkan API. CS Paint will work on any system which supports Vulkan 1.1 and makes use of the C++ interface provided with the Vulkan API. CS Paint currently consists of around 40 source files, most of which are fairly small wrappers used to encapsulate the Vulkan API. CS Paint includes GLM, which is an MIT licensed linear algebra library. It provides container types which are needed to interface with Vulkan, such as a three-dimensional vector. Since the GLM library is bundled with CS Paint, the only external dependency is really the Vulkan API. The CS Paint library is platform independent. However, the Vulkan API is only available natively on Windows, Linux, and recent versions of Android. Using the Molten VK wrapper makes the Vulkan API available on OS X and iOS. So Vulkan is really usable on all major desktop and mobile computing platforms. The higher level of abstraction which CS Paint provides allows your applications to render graphics without needing so many of the tedious and repetitive low-level tasks required by Vulkan. Things like memory allocation, creating buffers, image transfer barriers, and swap chain revalidation are critical and need to be handled properly in order to render. 
These parts and many others can be automated, and that is what CS Paint is addressing. By using CS Paint, developers will be able to focus less on the tedious details and more on their UI design and writing cool shaders. As part of the documentation for CS Paint, we have general information about Vulkan terminology and rendering graphics. It also includes class-level documentation for the CS Paint API. The first link will direct you to the online documentation, and the second link is to the full source code of CS Paint, which is hosted on GitHub. In our next video, we will continue this discussion and show the details of rendering text as graphics on the GPU. For more information about the CopperSpice project, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in a few weeks for our next video.